sweep the awards, these films shall not. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 failed Oscar bait movies of 2018. Nobody knows how much I'm suffering. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the films released in 2018 that, on paper, seem tailor-made to attract the attention of the Academy Awards, but which, in execution, widely miss their mark. We're not seeing these are all terrible movies, some of them are actually pretty good, but in terms of any presumed Oscar aspirations, they fell noticeably short. Hey, this will be fun. Number 10. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot. These days, Joaquin Phoenix is just about as close as a film producer can get to a sure thing when casting the leading role. He's not a guarantee at the box office, but he seems to be synonymous with quality movies. My heart really goes out to you, I mean, possibly paralyzed for life. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot is no exception. It's actually the highest rated film on our list today, with a solid 76% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's an inspiring but quirky biopic, and with a supporting cast including Jonah Hill, Rooney Mara, and Jack Black, it certainly came armed with an award show ready cast. The thing is, not that many people saw it or even heard of it, and we suspect that includes Academy voters. <laughs> Number 9. White Boy Rick Gone are the days of Matthew McConaughey, rom com star. In the last decade or so, he's reinvented himself as a serious actor, known for taking on tough, engaging, and gritty roles. Since he won Best Actor at the 2014 Academy Awards for Dallas Buyers Club, his involvement alone is reason enough to watch a film. What you said your name was? Rick. Hey, White Boy Rick. 2018's White Boy Rick is based on the unbelievable true story about a 14-year-old FBI informant and drug dealer in 1980s Detroit. From the trailers, the film promised to be engaging and stylish. While it's well worth a watch, the movie is dragged down by uneven pacing and poor creative choices, undermining the strong performances of its cast and an Oscar-ready story. Ask yourself this, would you believe a 15-year-old kid was working for the federal government? But he was. Number 8. Seven Days in Enteba from Narcos producer Jose Padilla, Seven Days in Enteba tells the true story of a 1976 plane hijacking and the ensuing counter-terrorist rescue mission. We call upon revolutionary movements everywhere to focus the attention of the world on the Palestinian people's struggle. Watching the trailer, you start to get a vibe reminiscent of Argo and Captain Phillips, both of which got plenty of Academy attention come award season. With talents like Rosamund Pike and Daniel Bruhl in the leading roles, Seven Days in Entebbe felt like the logical successor to the aforementioned films. That is, until people actually saw it. As soon as they know we're coming, they start to kill the men, the women, the children. What should have been a compelling story is lost in bad dialogue and mishandled action sequences. Most damning, however, it fails to imbue the events with any sort of significant meaning or reflection. Whatever happens, we did the right thing. Number 7. The Seagull Sir Sharonin has established herself as one of the most talented actors of her generation, despite her young age. She's already been nominated by the Academy three times for her roles in Atonement, 2015's Brooklyn, and 2017's Lady Bird. Though the latter film earned her much critical praise, as did 2018's Mary Queen of Scots, The Seagull didn't fly quite so high, at least in terms of the attention it received. Now you think I'm some insignificant nobody just like the rest of them do. At 67% on Rotten Tomatoes, it's actually better reviewed than Mary Queen of Scots, but adaptations of historic plays can be very hit or miss, and unfortunately, The Seagull doesn't do enough to stand out from other historical dramas or past adaptations of playwright Anton Chekhov's work. Please stay here. Stop asking. I can't. I can't. Number 6. The Catcher Was a Spy Excellent though he is in comedic roles, Paul Rudd isn't the first name that comes to mind when you think Academy Awards. However, in the context of a biographical spy drama, that includes the likes of Mark Strong, Sienna Miller, Jeff Daniels, Tom Wilkinson, Giancarlo Giannini, Hiroyuki Sanada, Guy Pearce, and Paul Giamatti, well, then an Oscar contender begins to take shape. Based on the unbelievable true story of Mo Berg, a baseball veteran turned spy for the US during World War II, The Catcher Was a Spy had the makings of an Oscar darling, and a potential fork in the road for Paul Rudd. Unfortunately, despite its riveting source material, the film was a swing and a miss, with critics calling it dry and watered down. If it comes down to it, are you going to be able to kill him? Number 5. 12 Strong 
Armed with a strong cast, including Chris Hemsworth, Michael Shannon, and Michael Pena, this patriotic, modern American action war drama very well could have been the next American Sniper or Hurt Locker. Or maybe even the next Saving Private Ryan. If we don't take that city, World Trade Center is just the beginning. The thing is, all of those films had something in common a real sense of heart, and a message to go along with a compelling story. Though 12 Strong is well acted and not lacking material to work with, it fails to properly mine the complex setting that is the war in Afghanistan. There was a great Oscar-worthy film to be made about the titular, declassified, true story of the horse soldiers, but sadly, 12 Strong just isn't it. I ain't losing one man on this team. Number 4. Operation Finale this film is a historical drama set in 1960 that follows Israeli intelligence officers as they pursue infamous SS officer and war criminal Adolf Eichmann. The trail went cold in 46. Latest intelligence suggests Buenos Aires. Interested? Absolutely. That's a seriously compelling premise. Place Oscar Isaac and Ben Kingsley in the leading roles, and you've got a knockout one-two punch aimed right at the Academy Awards. So what happened? Well, it's by no means a bad movie, and stands at 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. The acting is solid and the story is entertaining. Unfortunately, from start to finish, the film feels good but not great. A well-built movie that never becomes more than the sum of its parts. It's definitely worth a watch, it just might not leave a lasting impression. If you fail, he escapes justice. Perhaps forever. Number 3. Life Itself with his smash hit series This Is Us, Dan Fogelman has forever left his mark on the television landscape. Armed with that confidence and an incredible ability to connect with viewers on an emotional level, Fogelman seemed set to deliver 2018's tear-jerking Oscar darling with life itself. I'm waiting for the right moment, because when I ask you out, it's going to be the most important moment of my life. And I just want to make sure that I get it right. Oscar Isaac and Olivia Wilde led a strong cast of proven talents, and the plot had the sort of charms and quirks that audiences generally love. Though the film surely prompted some tears from sentimental cinema-goers, it was extremely heavy-handed, with some critics calling the melodrama overwrought to the point of becoming inadvertently hilarious. Ouch. So probably no Oscar nominations then. It's so strange how a completely random moment that happened way before I was born would shape my entire life. Are you glad it happened? Number 2. The 1517 to Paris There are few directors who connect with the Academy quite like Clint Eastwood. He's been nominated for Best Director four times, and five of his films have been nominated for Best Picture. With this 2018 biographical drama, Eastwood aimed to celebrate the bravery of three Americans who helped to foil a 2015 terrorist attack aboard a passenger train. In a bold move, he chose to honor the real-life heroes by casting them to play themselves. Unfortunately, the result just really doesn't work. The pacing is uneven, and though the untrained actors give it their all, the performances aren't award-worthy. You gotta be kidding me. Unfortunately for Eastwood this year, his other 2018 film The Mule, while solid, also received mixed reviews. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for everything. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. My father always told me, survival is never certain. He asked why boys can't wear skirts. I don't want to send him off to kindergarten labeled. He's only four. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, Your Honor. The five lifetime bids, that's okay, but the $50 surcharge, you really know how to stick it to a guy. You are the property of the penal administration of French Guiana. There's no way off. There's always a way. That sounds sort of promising. Mrs. Grab a child. Our journey continues. Number one, welcome to Marwin. Were we the only ones who thought this film might be great? From Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis, Welcome to Marwin looked like a return to form after a few more experimental films. Though an admittedly very different film, Welcome to Marwin seemed to aim for a similar balance between drama and comedy as Zemeckis' 1994 masterpiece Forrest Gump, which took home six Academy Awards. Sadly, despite its stellar cast, this wasn't the spiritual sequel to Forrest Gump we were hoping for. The women of Marwin protect me. 
You are safe. Welcome to Marwin reinforces Zemeckis' reputation as a pioneer in visual effects, but as a moving, compelling, and well-told story, it fell well short of its full potential. I was a hell of a good artist, and now I can barely write my name. So my dolls have to tell a story. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.